Hey guys, Mike from Boyer Bows here. I am in the process of laying out our board for the next build along, and I wanted to stop for a minute and tell you why, um, my opinion, why I think the Mulgabet is the best and easiest design for someone who's just starting to make uh, bows, especially from boards. Um, we talked in a video I, I just posted as well about grain pattern. And now it has to go straight up the limb, the entire length of the limb. It has to be good on the side of the bow, the whole thing like that. The thing is, when you cut into a bow, or let me get these words screwed up all night, cut into a board to taper the limb, as in a flat bow or an English long bow or, or um, uh, any kind of bow where you're tapering the limb, a pyramid bow, for example, you're in a position where you have this nice straight lines going all the way up the board but then you cut into that and you're kind of in a sense creating runoffs in the grain and that's where you really need a bow with some good elastic quality to it so that that um, ending of the grain pattern that you just created doesn't cause you a problem uh, you need a, a piece of wood that has good elastic strength or the ability to um, essentially stretch without coming apart. Uh, very dense woods in general uh, have such are, are 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 practically brittle, and if you bend them at all, they lift and the bow fails. Hickory is one of the best woods you can get in board form that has such wonderful elastic strength that um, and is usually so straight with its grain pattern. Uh, because it grows so straight that you can get away with a lot if you get the right grain pattern wood. Now obviously we're using uh, a different wood in this case and we're going to be backing it and a lot of the runoff rules don't apply as much when you put a backing on the bow. When you use sinew or rawhide or bamboo or maybe some of the more modern products like fiberglass or you know something like that. Um, but, in the but the thing is in the case of a mulgabet, and I'm going to flip this over here. In the case of a mulgabet, you have your handle, okay, and remember the only part of the bow that moves on a mulgabet is this working limb. The handle, the fade, the other fade, and the static limb, none of that moves. So when you get your board, you've got this nice edge that the factory was done at the, fa at the sawmill for you. That's the first reason, so easy. you don't have to do anything. You just get a two and a half inch board, done, okay, you've got your dimension there. But the other thing is you've got this nice grain pattern. You found the perfect board. Your grain pattern's running straight up here um, along with the wood, no runoffs, and guess what? You don't cut into it. You just leave it alone. There's no violation of any grain pattern. By the time you do cut into it, you're into the fade. You say, well, isn't that a problem? No, because the fade really doesn't move. It is more of a, it's more of a district, like it's almost like a shock absorber. Think of it that way. The fade is more a place where the forces from the working limb can come into something that doesn't move and distribute uh, into the, instead of having an abrupt wall there, it's sort of, the force distributes into the fade, but the fade doesn't actually move. And for that reason, you don't have to worry about cutting in here and whatever you're creating runoff wise because if it isn't bending it can't it isn't stretching if it isn't stretching you're not going to lift anything it's just static it doesn't move so for that reason another portion of the concern that you can have or another problem that can come up in the process of making a bow is eliminated you um, never violate the proper grain pattern that you took all that time at the lumber store to find in the first place and um, for those two reasons, you know, you already have part of your bow dimension. The part that's moving, the part that really is most dangerous to fail, is the part that moves. And um, that's already perfectly symmetrical, perfectly even from you, from the sawmill, as well as the fact that you don't make any cuts in it to destroy the strongest possible grain pattern that's going to help you succeed. And for those two reasons, I think you're at a major advantage over any other 
bow design uh, when it comes to working with boards. Now that's just my opinion guys. There are other flaws that can come up and other issues that can arise of course but at least from a starting point you've eliminated two, fact two big factors that can cause your bow to fail and uh, as many factors that you can eliminate especially when you're starting out to me that's a, a, a great thing. Okay that's basically my mentality, that's my rationale so uh, I hope you guys will join me for the next build along which is going to be a mulga bed bow. We're going to make it out of maple and uh, I'm going to go over all the dimensions and all that good stuff with you in the next videos. Alright, uh, take care. It's Mike from Boyer Bows. I hope this was somewhat revealing in my... Uh, I revealed my madness a little bit for you guys. Take care guys. Mike from Boyer Bows.